My name is Brian Allgaier. I'm the creative director on the Ratchet franchise at Insomniac Games. The story is told from two different perspectives, um, one from Ratchet and another from Clank. Uh, Ratchet's on a journey with Captain Cork to try to find his best friend, and Clank has been taken away to this mysterious location by the Zoni. When we started the Ratchet and Clank series on the PS3, we made a conscious effort to both bring new people into the series as well as old fans who enjoyed the PS2 games. In the Ratchet and Clank games we've always focused on skill points and having a reward system for people who like to kind of go back and find every little element of the game. And so that's something that we're definitely going to do for a crack in time. We are supporting trophies, so there will be a trophy slash skill point system that I think a lot of our players will like. There's a lot of people that really like the Clank gameplay, and there's a lot of big fans of Clank. Some people actually rate Clank as being their favorite character over Ratchet. So we were concerned that if we're going to have Clank um, captured by the Zoni, uh, we wouldn't want players to spend the entire game looking for Clank and never get to play him. So this kind of created a unique opportunity to tell a story from two different perspectives and really um, focus more on Clank. For the weapons contest, we had five finalists, and from those, we let the fans pick which one they liked. Um, I'm sure that you know there's a lot of people who are thinking, well, why didn't that weapon win? Because there were so many great submissions. I mean, we had one that turned... Uh, characters in the Captain Quark. We had this other one that was like a plasma sprinkler. So there's a lot of really good ideas and a lot of tough choices. And so um, and I think people will, will be really happy with the one that they picked. There's a lot of collaboration in Insomniac, and that's one of the, uh, the key characteristics that is always um, promoted. Um, we have um, all of our designers, all of our programmers, artists, all collaborate to come up with the various designs. And so that's something that happens across both projects. And we have a lot of people from the Resistance team uh, who moved over to the Ratchet team for a crack in time. And, um, you know, we do have to be careful about, you know, well, this is more mature, this is a darker, better weapon for Resistance. And the goofy one that turns characters into chickens or monkeys or whatever, well, that one, we'll save that for Ratchet. From the very beginning on Tools of Destruction, the first PlayStation 3 game, we've always thought of this as being uh, like a saga or a trilogy, and that that we wanted to tell a story that would span multiple games. Are you ready? Quest for Booty was a new sort of venture. Uh, we'd never made a downloadable game before, and this was actually our first game that was under 12 hours. And it was a four-hour experience. It was very tight, and we actually learned a lot from that. Um, what we ended up doing for our Crack and Time team is we divided them up into separate um, groups of people, and it was almost like we had uh, we have multiple Quest for Booty teams all working on a Crack in Time. Uh, Crack in Time is much longer, it's a full length game, it'll be on a Blu-ray disc, but we actually liked the tight, cohesive uh, quality of Quest for Booty, and so we're using this, a similar approach to how we develop a Crack in Time. So for my Blaster Runs Hot Contest, we had a number of designers and programmers and um, some of our project managers all sit in a room and just go through every single weapon and try to rate, okay, well, how good is this on a strategic level? Is it a funny weapon? Uh, how visually impressive will it look? And so we rated each one uh, as we went through them, and then we assembled um, a list. Um, we, I think we came up with about a list of 20, and then we further narrowed that down to our top five. And that's where we let the fans then pick which one of those five weapons is their favorite. So we're wrapping up the major story arc that we started with Tools of Destruction. And uh, for this game, we have a much more satisfying ending. I think both in Tools of Destruction and Quest for Booty, we left people, um, and we had a bit of a cliffhanger, so I think people didn't really, you know, they were like, what's next? So for this game, you know, we're going to conclude it, uh, wrap up a lot of the questions that fans have, and I think surprise a number of people with how we end it.